Hello and welcome to EV Platform. This episode we're talking with Blake and we're out on the road looking at the Tesla Model 3. Blake really puts it through his paces. This is a video in a series of Tesla videos that we've got coming to the channel, so make sure you subscribe. Stick around to the end where we have a chat about the bigger picture about Tesla, range, value for money, style and looks. Let's get stuck into the details. So we're into the Model 3, long range. I'm ready to hit the road, but there's a few things I want to go through on the way. Now, I didn't want to be reading off the screen while I was driving, so took out my phone. I got a few notes here to tell you about quickly before we get through. The things that are going to affect the range, whether or not we're going to make it, how much battery we'll make it with, etc. So uh, the weather, it's going to be about three, four, five degrees Celsius for the whole day, so pretty chilly. Traffic, it's a midweek morning. I'm expecting a little bit, not too bad, but even if I wanted to barrel down the motorway at 75 miles an hour, 80 miles an hour, I couldn't because we're going to be in a little bit of traffic realistically. We're on the 18-inch Euros, so that should be good for, for range. I preconditioned the car. Now, in fairness to it, I preconditioned it to be ready to go about 30, 45 minutes ago. So battery's on 99%, but it's still nice and warm in here. The terrain, we're going to be doing about a third of the trip through mountain passes. So we're expecting to go from sea level up to 500 meters above altitude, um, back down to 200, up to 450 again, and so on. So good bit of mountain range, but I really like that because we're going to get to test out the regen and see what the car is like in various circumstances. Um, the driving style, I'm not hanging around. We're plugging in at a supercharger and I want to be down below 5%, ideally when we arrive there. So there'll be no hypermile and I can guarantee you that. Uh, weight in the car, there's nothing extra between me, my camera gear, a few charging cables, you're looking at just above 100 kilos, so, you know, what's that, uh, I don't know, 250 pounds or 16, 17, 18 stone, something like that. So look, no point in hanging around, let's uh, hit the road, we're going to give you a few updates at, at particular stages along the way to let you know how this is going. Okay, so we have a first update for you because we have uh, done about 62 kilometers, the first stage of the trip. We are about to head up into the mountains and we're off the motorway now for, for the next hour or two. So what are some of the, the details I want to give you? I have some up here on the phone. We've done 62 kilometers. Um, the average efficiency has been 159 watt hours per kilometer. Uh, the altitude at the moment, we're up to about 80 meters above sea level and we're going to be going another 500 up again. Um, the gasometer, so we are down to 85% battery, which is 462 kilometers range according to this car, but I'm pretty sure we're not going to do that considering the winter conditions uh, and the, the length of motorway driving that we have left. And then the last one is, how long do we have left? Well, we have about 290 kilometers to go, having done 60 already. So we're looking good. Hopefully I don't have to drive around uh, the supercharger at the destination for too long. Anyway, we're going to head up into the mountains now. We'll give you an update just before we come back down again. Uh, that'll probably take me an hour to get through these, these mountain passes. We'll catch you then. So we're up in the Wicklow Mountains now. We are, I want to stop at this point because we're up at uh, just under 500 meters above sea level. So it's the last kind of high point in the mountains before we head downhill, catch the motorway again in half an hour or so. So the update, uh, you can see the consumption is just all over the place, going up mountain passes, back down the hills again. There's real long stretches here of, uh, of that green, you know, where you're actually recuperating a lot of energy, which is great to see. Um, yeah. We are down to 72% battery, which is telling us that is about 393 kilometers of range left. In terms of efficiency, then let's see what's going on on the trip so far. So we've done 108 kilometers at an average of 174 watt hours per kilometer. So that's way up on the, the normal of what I've been doing in the few days I've had the car. But as we know, we're carrying about nearly 500 meters of, of altitude, so that will drop down again. So that's about everything to that we want to go through. Let's hit the road again and we'll give you another update later on. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, time for another update now because we've come down from the mountains. We're about to hit the motorway and we know we're going to start really getting uh, through the battery at that stage. So what's the update? We have done 146 kilometers since we left with an average efficiency of 153 watt hours per kilometer. So we're, we're going pretty well. Uh, yeah. I have to say, happy enough with that. Uh, what's the battery on? We have 67% remaining, as Tesla tells us that would get us 365 kilometers, but we know that's, that's not the case because we're about to hit a motorway. Our destination is 206 kilometers away, and they reckon that we are going to arrive there with 14%, so from 67% down to 14. Um, I really wanted to be below 5% when we get there. So yeah, hopefully with the heating on, we'll keep a fairly good pace on the motorway. We might actually get a little bit lower than that. We'll give you another update when we get down there. So this was supposed to be the final update, but it's not because we still have 7% battery. Now we just passed the exit for the supercharger because yeah, still on 7%. And I want to get really low to, to test the, uh, the charging speeds, you know, from two or 3% or something like that upwards. So we're going to keep going out the road, put another 10 or 20 miles into the car. And then by the time we get back, we theoretically are down nice and low to, to do this supercharger test. So we'll catch you there. So we've arrived at the supercharger that we were going to in Matten Point in Cork, uh, down to 1% battery. So we had to drive up and down the road outside. Uh, it was a 60 mile per hour road as well, just trying to burn through the battery to get it down really low for our supercharger test now what we're gonna do after this. So down to 1%, which the Tesla is telling us that we still have eight kilometers of range left. So yeah, maybe we do, maybe, maybe there's 10 or 15 in it as well. There's always a little bit of a buffer there. What have we done since we last um, left this morning? Since our last charge, it was 393 kilometers we've done. So pretty sure this car would have gotten to the 400 kilometer if we really wanted to push it with an average energy consumption of 173 watt hours per kilometer. Absolutely fantastic stuff. Interestingly enough, uh, it says that we've used 68 kilowatt hours since we left this morning. So that would kind of tally up with, um, with the percentage that it's on including a little bit of a buffer. So it's same 1%, we suspect it's just slightly higher than that. Was there anything else that you need then? No, we're back down to sea level um, and we're at our destination. So that's it. Blake, you had a busy couple of days with that Tesla Model 3, but specifically in this episode, it was all about range and efficiency. You did a fair bit of kilometer slash miles well, was it as good as you expected? Because in the sales on their own website and, and figures floated around the place, do you think that they justified uh, the range that a Tesla Model 3 long range can give? Well, to your first point, yeah, it was a 10 hour day of, of a nonstop Tesla driving, supercharging, various conditions recording. So long, long day. But what a car to be in. Um, absolutely superb machine. We might talk you know, some more details about that later on. But um it was I disappointed that I got less than the advertised range on the website or WLTP? No, not at all. The efficiency of that car and its range is, I think, in incredible. You can get more out there, you know, and we've just seen, um, is it Tom Malogny over in the in the US getting 500 um, miles out of a, a Lucid? That's absolutely incredible, but, you know, it's so much more expensive. So, yeah, I, I, I just was blown away by the car, the efficiency that we got, yeah. Some stats, you did nearly three, sorry, 400 kilometers, nearly 250 miles. You did 173 watt hours per kilometer, uh, which is about 3.6 miles per kilowatt hour. Blake, we're both EV drivers. You own an EV and I drive a different EV every week. And, and mm. were you impressed overall with it compared against your daily driver, which is a Nissan Leaf? Oh, it's just night and day, you know, in the sense there's no comparison. And I was thinking about it afterwards that, I, I actually couldn't have done that journey in my old Nissan Leaf. I think that it would have been impossible um, because, I, you know, to go up the mountain, through the mountains and then back down. And my car, my old Nissan Leaf, to do that exact journey that the Tesla did would have taken three, I would say, three full charges from 100 down to 0%. And there just wouldn't have been a charger up in the mountains to get me through that route that I took. Um, and the efficiency is just so much better in the Tesla. It's got a heat pump because it was cold that day. You know, it was hovering around the four, five, six, seven degrees, something like that. Um, and the speeds that I was doing on the motor as well. So I, you know, was within the, the boundaries of, of the law and safe driving, but I was going at a good speed and uh, the Leaf just wouldn't have, wouldn't have packed it at all. You know, it's incredible uh, evolution of technology in, over the few years, you know. 
now, Blake, while you're there gushing about Tesla, uh, amazing range, um, the charging experience. We're going to have another video about that. So again, make sure that you've subscribed to the channel. Um, it's not all roses. It can't be all good. Some people don't like the looks externally. Some people don't like the looks internally. Some people don't like the ride quality. They think it's a bit firm. What uh, Can you give us some uh, counter arguments as to why it was such a great day out of the house? Um, like some negatives or some downsides. Um, I, there are a few. Like it's you know for me tesla is not perfect um they've still got a little bit of work to do but then every car manufacturer does um are there some downsides to the interior some things that i don't like and i would have changed differently if i was the designer um yes of course there are but i think um a little bit of context is is very important and a little bit of understanding in the sense that there's different tastes different strokes for different folks you know um, some people are going to get into that Tesla and just love the minimalism of it. Um, other people, they want that German sense of luxury inside. And the same goes for the ride and the handling. Like it's a heavy car. You know, I think it's 1,950 kilos or something like that. So it's a very, very heavy car. But for me, it handles it well. But other people are going to criticize it because they want to get into, uh, you know, a fossil fuel car um, hatchback style that has about 1,300 kilos behind it. So um, I think that we have to accept that there's no one car out there for everybody. And um, so the Tesla hits the mark with so many people. She so can't get a car for months in some circumstances, you know. It's a number one seller in a number of markets. And if you are yeah. watching us from outside, let us know what country you're watching us from, I suppose. The, um, it's a premium car, Blake. And uh, as much as it has an amazing um, charging network and it has a, a amazing technology inside, it's not a super affordable car compared to other uh, vehicles in, in its size. Uh, thoughts on that value for money proposition yeah well certainly up until a year ago i would have said there's, there's nothing to touch it um they were starting to get a little bit of competition now i mean the polestar is is quite impressive in many ways we've got the ev6 and the ionic 5 although bigger cars coming in um also the the i4 which we can't uh, do well derek you've seen you've been in it already over over in germany on but uh you know we haven't been in this for a week properly driving it yet but that's going to give it some competition as well it's up there in terms of speed and, and range with the model 3 so uh is it good value well it's a hugely expensive purchase so so no in that sense but also when you compare it to the competition and what you get out of it uh, in terms of range efficiency but also the charging network it, it looks really really good if you think about it in that that relative sense then yeah it is for me anyway this um has been an episode of a series on the tesla model 3 as we said at the start and, and during our conversation please subscribe to the channel hit that notification bell make sure you've liked this video and as always leave a comment uh, thank you this has been ev platform thank you very much for watching <laughs>